go ahead. Hey, Landry. Um, these are such unusual circumstances that I've seen a lot of players today discussing about the mental challenge, and Doc talked about that of playing potentially three months in an isolated area. Considering this has never really been done before, how do you how have you gone about preparing for what it would be like to be out there for such a long stretch? Um, I think the biggest thing is just coming to terms with like the reality of it. Like it is what it is. Um, you know, I can't do anything to change that. Uh, it's not in my control. Um, you know, obviously the only choice I would have is to not go, and I don't want to do that. I want to go play. So um, it's just a matter of just coming to terms with that's that's what what's going on, and just going down there with the right mindset of like, okay, this is a boot camp. Um, you know, and just go and, and make the best of it. Be be locked in, be in the right headspace, and, and just go make the best of it. Just, I think that's the best way to approach it. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, next question comes from Cameron. Cameron, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Hey, Landry. Nice. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Yeah, no Got problem. A couple questions for you. What can you take away from the regular season and apply it to this restart? I know it's an odd situation, but what can you take away from the regular season? And then how have you guys maintained chemistry as a team? Like at the end of the, before things shut down in March, you guys were kind of coming together and played a bunch <clears> of games <throat> finally as a complete team. But how do you guys maintain that chemistry through this uh, quarantine and shutdown? Um, so the first question was about how what we take away from the regular season. Um, into the restart. So that would be, I mean, just we've had a lot of time just to sit and kind of think. And I know me personally, I've just thought a lot about, okay, what what did I like that I was doing? Um, what did I not like? What what can I do better? What can I utilize more? Um, a few stretches of games where I felt like I felt really good uh, and a couple stretches where it was not so much. So I think we've just had time to really think and break down our own games, watch film of other people. Uh, that's what I've been doing, you know, trying to watch teams in the past, you know, who have had championship expectations and try to see where I fit in in those teams and how those guys were utilized and what they did to, to be effective. Um, uh, but I mean, it, the biggest thing, you just have a lot of downtime to, to watch film, study yourself, study each other, and, um, you know, try to take, take the pieces that you want to bring with you to the restart. Um, and then the second question with our chemistry, we've been great. I mean, we text all the time in our group chat, always talking, very open. Um, you know, we, it's, it's, nothing's really changed there. If anything, it's increased more. We've talked more, um, you know, more active in our group chat, group text, uh, Zoom calls, group FaceTimes, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's been, it's been great. We've, we've stayed in touch. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, Landry, next question comes from Beth Harris. Hey, Landry, how you doing? Not too bad. Uh, what's your level of concern about traveling to Florida at a time and an area where the number of virus cases are rising? Um, I mean, obviously, it's something to think about, something that you see and I've acknowledged. Um, but I think, I mean, if there's a scenario where you'd feel more comfortable, it'd be being in a bubble that's, you know, as controlled as uh, any environment can be. Um, so I think that's that's one positive that I've been thinking about. Um, obviously, you know, risk is, I, think, I mean, Adam Silver said it the other day, you know, there's, risk, there's, there's no option with no risk at this point. Um, you know, you could go get it, go and get, get gas today, you know, down the street. So, um, I don't know, I kind of just, I mean, it's obviously a concern, but, you know, I think we're in the best possible uh, situation and scenario to, to combat that. Thanks, Beth. Uh, Miriam. Hey, Landy, how you doing? Not too bad. Um, yeah, so uh, you sort of talked about the concerns and, and sort of the, the perspective on, on COVID in Florida, but do, do you have any concerns or did you have any thoughts about what it kind of feels, what it, what it means to play basketball now in this sort of this important time in America and socially? and kind of either whether you have any pause about playing or whether you see it as an opportunity to kind of encourage education and acknowledgement. Yeah, um, obviously that's been a, a hot topic, uh, definitely something we've talked about and 
um, I think there's it's it's interesting because there's multiple perspectives and you know everyone has their own pros and cons with them. Um, you know, I think me personally, I think the more cameras we have on us, you know, um, the more opportunity we have to get our messages out and and say what we feel like we want to say, what we need to say, what can help. Uh, so I, I think I think it's a positive that you know we'll be kind of a focal point in a way and be able to you know still control the narrative a little bit and talk about what we want to talk about in regards to you know what's going on socially in America right now um, and and you know still be able to to influence and, and affect affect hopeful change so that's kind of my perspective on it. Thank you, Mario. Uh, next question is from Dan Wilkie. Hey, Landry. Um, I'm curious, uh, in, in kind of in talk, talking about players and speaking up against racism and police brutality and things like that, um, you entered a league that was kind of um, already pretty active in, in speaking out. I'm curious if there were any moments that really stick with you, whether it's the Miami Heat Trayvon Martin post or the Espy speech. Um, are, are there any moments that, that really kind of let you know that in this league you can say, um, what you want to say and not fear um, ramifications necessarily for it professionally? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, the first one that comes to mind is obviously the, the SB speech, uh, however long ago that was with LeBron and uh, Melo and Dwayne Wade and all those guys standing on stage talking. Um, you know, I, I, but it's kind of known, you know, it's, it's very well known. I feel like that we're seen as the league that has the best rapport with our, you know, owners and, um, you know, people in the league, in the league office, and they allow us to kind of be us, be ourselves, and and empower us to talk about the things we want to talk about and be be active uh, in the community. So that's something that's known. Um, I don't think there was anything that really needed to happen to be, you know, for me at least in my time in the league, for me to fully realize it. I think it's been known, and that's something that the league's done a really good job of. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next, we're going to go to Farbad. Hey, Landry. Um, Paul George had mentioned this time off was great for his shoulders, and he was able to fully rehab. You, know, you had your own injuries at the start of the season. Has this time off kind of helped you with any of that? Uh, I mean, that wasn't really anything on my mind. I felt pretty good once I came back and was playing. Um, felt like I kind of hit my stride there once, once we kind of shut down. Um, but I, I took it for what it was worth. I mean, you know, you don't get that much time off that often. So the first couple of weeks of this whole quarantine, I really kind of, you know, made it a point to enjoy it, enjoy the time off um, and just take it for what it was. And, you know, it's you got to take advantage of moments like that where you get to get the rest a little bit. All right, Farbad, next we're going to go to Yovan. Hey Landry, um, two part question for you. Uh, as a shooter, obviously you rely a lot on rhythm. So were you able to access a hoop at all? I know only a few guys were able to. And if not, how, you know, how do you feel about, I know you guys have been able to practice the, or uh, get an individual workout for the last couple of weeks, but how has that kind of been having all this time off as, as a shooter and someone who relies a lot on rhythm and reps and practice? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's been a weird time for everybody. Um, but that real rhythm will come from, you know, this this next month in Orlando when we get, get rolling a little bit uh, with practices and whatnot. And then even the last month or, or so when we've, since we've had the facility open has really, you know, been able to ramp things up. And, and I've, I've started to, you know, try to re relocate that game rhythm. Um, so it's uh, it's not a huge concern of mine. You're you're exactly right. Shooting is a ton about rhythm and feel, and it's just a matter of time, you know, before I before I find it and I'm immersed in it. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh Next we'll go to Tomer. Uh, can you get there? Yes, yep. sir. Sure can. Uh, Landry, hope you're doing well. Uh, this, is, this is a two part here for you. Um, first of all, as a competitor, where do you stand on the whole, you know, asterisk stock from the championship? Because this, these are unprecedented times and, you know, anything could happen in Orlando. And then the second part is, is how important is, is mental toughness going to be in this? Because, you know, there's no crowd here. So 
I guess, you know, as a, as a rhythm shooter, you, you miss a couple of shots, trash talk might be flying your way, and you can't sort of tune that out completely, maybe. How important is mental toughness in, in, in this uh, return? Um, I don't think... I mean, yeah, mental toughness is everything, regardless of if there's, you know, fans or not. I mean, some of the most competitive basketball I've played has just been, you know, pick up, just show up to a gym, pick up. Everybody's talking to each other. Uh, you know, there's there's environments like that that still foster really, really competitive, you know, play. And this is the NBA, um, so it's the best athletes in the world playing against each other. And just because there's not going to be a few fans, there's – there's no reason to believe that it's not going to be competitive basketball. So, um, you know, it'll be, it'll still be competitive. It'll still be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, mental toughness is always huge and key in any any sport, any high level sport. Um, so it'll it'll be just as just as key and important. Uh, Landry, next question is from Kurt. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Landry, kind of a follow-up to that. Doc was talking about how instead of an asterisk, whoever wins this should get a gold star because of the challenge of being in that bubble for potentially 100 days. Um, for you specifically, when being away from family and routine and in that bubble, what do you see as the greatest challenge uh, emotionally, mentally in that time uh, on the assumption you guys can get to the NBA Finals? I think the biggest thing is going to be finding things to do um, to keep your mind occupied. Um, I mean, you're going to be in the same environment. We're not traveling. We're going to be, have the same hotel rooms, same scenery for a long, a long time. Um, and you know, I think it's going to be important to find. You know, I've even debated. I talked to Doc today about. I was. I might get some golf clubs and hit him up. See if we can. Uh, you know. He can give me some lessons or something so I can figure my golf swing out. Or I don't know, like just pick up new hobbies. I want to read more while I'm down there. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, obviously, I'm going to miss my people. Uh, I just got a puppy. I'm going to miss my dog. Like, I'm not going to get to see him for three months. Uh, my girlfriend, my mom, you know, my family who I would, you know, normally be able to spend, you know, my off season with. Um, so it's going to be tough for sure. But again, I, I go back to what I said at the start of all of this. It's just acknowledging that, like, that's that's the reality of it. That's what it is. Um, so just accepting that uh, and making the best of the next next three and a half, four months. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, next question is from Corey Maggetti. Hey, Landry, how are you doing? What's up, Corey? Uh, one question, I know you're such a great student of the game, and as far as from a film perspective, what have you done during this time to watch film to see where you can actually maximize the amount of space moving different areas on the court as well as you utilizing you know your other players in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard to find those specific spots where you can be more effective going into Orlando yeah I think I mean I've had some conversations with a couple you know a couple teammates you know me and Lou have been talking a lot this week about me Lou me and Pat um, about just how to pick spots and that's one thing that's been obviously like you know with a new team and a group of guys as good as we are, it's it, everybody has this conception that it just gets easy, but it's it's not the case. It gets harder, really. Um, so trying to find my pick my spots of where I want to try to, you know, get more involved, get active in, in triggering an action. That doesn't mean I got to get the ball and get a shot, but finding ways to to move more. Um, I've been watching a lot of like, you know, Clay and Steph and those guys a few years ago when they were really like. You know, really rolling, uh, figuring out how you know what they would do um, against the types of defenses that I'm starting to see. Um, you know, in order to how to how to be effective, how to get involved, not only just for them to score, but to trigger other actions for for other guys. So I've been I've been really diving into that, really thinking a lot, um, watching myself, watching other people, just trying to trying to figure out what what I can do to kind of take my game to the next level with with this little break we've been on. Thanks, Corey. Uh, next is Mario. Mario? Chevin. Lose him. Hold on. Let me see if I can get him back here. Mario, are you there? I'm here. You got me? Yes, sir. Perfect. Um, 
Landry, because the uh, playoff seedings are unlikely to change in um, eight games, do you feel that the team will ease into the new season or go full throttle from the start considering uh, you know you face the, the Lakers right off the bat? Um, I mean, we, we want to win games, put ourselves in the best situation possible. Um, I don't think there's going to be any lack of urgency whatsoever. I mean, we only have eight games to ramp up to the playoffs, so there's not going to be any sort of – like the, the standings will change if we lose eight games in a row, I can tell you that. So um, there's no there's no easing into anything. The easing in part has been this month and then uh, this upcoming month of, of camp in Orlando before the games. And then, you know, once the games are here, hopefully we're in a spot where we can – there's no easing left to do. We can just get right into it. Thanks, Mario. Uh, next is Helene Elliott. Helene, you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. yes, we can. Okay, thanks. Um, hi, Landry. My question is whether um, you know, seeing everything that's happening in the world around us, and I'm wondering if you felt inclined to get involved in any kind of uh, peaceful demonstrations or marches or otherwise um, uh, push forward uh, the cause of uh, social justice? Yeah, um, no, I haven't been to any protests or marches, um, you know, I, just for the sake of my just health with all this stuff coming up. I don't want to put me or anybody who's been in my house in a, in a bad spot. Um, so I'm kind of trying to still stay as socially distanced as I can. Um, but I have been looking into a few organizations back home in Kansas City, doing my research, groundwork on, you know, who I could potentially want to work with and, and moving forward and moving the bar in the right direction. Um, so I've been more, you know, kind of, you know, tuned in in that sense rather than I haven't been out in the street, um, you know, protesting and marching, but I've been you know, really thinking about what I can do um, and how I can how I can make an impact and hopefully influence some change. Thanks, Lee. Next question is from Martin. Hi, Landry. Uh, Martin here. I have a question regarding uh, the fact that uh, we've seen soccer leagues uh, in Europe uh, coming back after two, three months, and there were um, quite a bit of injuries um, after not playing for three, four months. Uh, what do you think you can do to prevent, to be prepared for for, uh, for the tournament like that? Um, what I've been doing, how I've been approaching is trying to replicate my workouts, um, whether it's on the court or, you know, in the weight room, replicate them as closely as possible to, like, actual in-game movements and the, the tempo at which I, I would be moving in a game. Um, and there's been a gradual ramping up uh, that we've gone with the last – you know, month and a half or so. Um, but I mean, I feel like I'm in a good place. I've done a good job, done my due diligence. I've done everything I can uh, to keep myself in good shape, keep my body in a good spot. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm in a good place. Thanks, Martin. Um, we have Miriam. All right. Okay. So it's kind of a weird question, but playing in different arenas than you're normally, you guys usually play in huge arenas in front of huge crowds. Um, does it change a shooter's perspective? It, can it can it help no. you as a shooter to kind of be in this place or, or not really? Or just no, not it like, doesn't. Gym, play like that? Gym's a gym. If it's 10 feet high, it's going in. Uh, ball's the same. Uh, yeah, nothing changes. All right, uh, thank you, Miriam. And we have time for two more. Sabrina? Hey, Landry. Uh, I'm just curious. There was a lot of talk about how some players felt like their voices weren't being heard in terms of like the voting to restart the season. I'm curious what that process was like with you on the Clippers with your player representative. Like their voices weren't being heard? Yeah, um, like they felt like they couldn't uh, express their concerns about the league restarting. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can't speak for other teams. I know with us, though, we have been very open with each other. 
and encouraged one another to whatever concerns you have, let's get them out here on the table. Let's talk about them. Uh, what do we like? What do we not like? What would we like to try to change? Um, I think us as a team, we've done everything very collectively. I can't speak for other teams. I don't know who you're referring to, but I don't think there'd be anybody uh, um, you know, on our team who would – we've all been very open and communicated with each other uh, you know, re in, regarding all of this, this restart and in the bubble and you know, everything, social justice, all of that. So. Thanks, Landry. Uh, second to last question from Helene. Go ahead, Helene. I already asked my question. Thanks. Oh, no problem at all. Okay. And last one from Cameron. Hey, th thank you guys for uh, taking the time with us again. Landry, I think we all know who handles the core team best on your team. Which one of your teammates would you say didn't handle it so well? Who do you think handled it the best? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Kawhi probably handled his best. I think he said as much. But who, who, who on your team didn't, would you say, didn't handle it so well? I don't know. I mean, I can't speak for everybody. Um, I would, I would say that anybody you think handled it really well probably went through a period where they didn't handle it very well. I know I didn't. Um, you know, I feel like I'm in a really good spot, handled it really well. But there was probably a month stretch there almost a month where it was just really kind of draining. Uh, your energy was zapped or whatever. So I think everybody went through their phase. Um, I don't think anybody was perfect, uh, but, you know, um, you'd, I think you'd be surprised if you, you saw the real picture of a lot of people in, in their quarantines for sure.